New at noon, Centerpoint giving us now a major update on power restoration. A company executive sharing that half a million customers still will not have power until sometime next week. This news coming during a Public Utilities Commission hearing. Take a listen. That leaves about 500,000 customers that we currently expect uh, to have outages that go into next week. Our Devon Raming is following this story. He joins us now live with the very latest. Devon, what can you tell us? Well, Sherman, Centerpoint tells us that 400,000 more customers will have power by Friday and another 350,000 will be back up and running by end of day on Sunday. Now, yesterday we spoke with Centerpoint Energy Vice President Darren Caro, who says they're working as fast as they can while still addressing issues with the company's outage map, which has caused so much frustration despite countless complaints about incorrect information and about outages and restoration. The company says it's paying close attention now to accuracy. We're making adjustments to the map as we speak. The other thing I want customers to know is even if you see yourself in that green on the map, don't worry, we know you're out of power and we are gonna get to you. Last night, KHOU 11's Jeremy Rogowski asked Carol about complaints that power crews have been sitting for hours in staging areas not doing repairs. He said he couldn't speak to individual situations where crews were waiting to be dispatched, but he said all the companies outside crews were now in place, allowing them to get crews on the road and working quicker. Of course, we're going to have much more on these restoration efforts coming up this evening in our later newscasts. For now, live in Houston, Devon Roming, KHOU 11 News. What's going on, guys? I'm Steve. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If it's your first time stopping by the channel, hit that subscribe button. Trust me, you won't regret it. If you're a returning subscriber, as always, guys, welcome back, and I do appreciate the support. Oh, the candle ain't lit. I didn't leave it over. But anyway, check it out. Um, I left uh, Houston yesterday. You guys know that. And uh, I said a couple of things about how I felt about Centerpoint Energy and the way they're handling this power outage out there. And uh, I was right. I said, in my opinion, I think they wasn't prepared for it. A lot of people are suffering. They told us one thing about how the power is going to be on and then how it's, you know, just hold on. And we got half the people with power. And it was a bunch of lies. They had that fictitious map up there that I put on my YouTube short. And I showed that they was lying. That thing was back from May. Exposed them. Guess what? I'm going to show you two videos, one that came out this morning and one that uh, came out yesterday. Even uh, Willie D, shout out Willie D. He out there in Houston reporting on the uh, situation. He said the same thing. He ain't seen no trucks in his area. Guess what? I have ain't seen no trucks in my area neither. And watch this. Every time we did see trucks, they was riding to and fro or just sitting in parking lots, sitting there. Got all these people from all these other places coming out here. Y'all making press conference after press conference. The mayor blaming some people. Some people blaming other people. Centerpoint uh, uh, vice president, he on TV talking and ain't nobody. And like if you pay attention. In the time that you are doing these interviews, somebody's suffering from heat stroke. You can ask the EMS and firefighters that are being overworked out there in the goddamn city while y'all are sitting up there in air, scratching your fucking asses and acting like you're doing something. People are getting exposed and they need to. This is an industrial city. Oil and stuff. They make water there. They got an Ozarka distillery right there. When Hurricane Harvey came, I remember I couldn't go outside the house without an army helicopter damn near coming down on me, asking me if I needed help. This is worse than that situation, in my opinion, because we're dealing with heat. Now, the water has subsided. But this right here is an ongoing thing. We had like better issues with our power then than we do now. Heat is... Flooding is one thing. When you're dealing with intense heat after a bunch of water and stuff has been sitting, making the city hot and evaporation, the humidity's up, this is a serious crisis. It is. Let me look, let, let you see these videos. The first video I'm going to show you about these trucks sitting there looking. Man, listen. Look. Well, Centerpoint has 18 staging areas for out-of-town crews. Viewers tell us they've driven by them and asked us why so many trucks were parked and not out in the field doing repair work. 
So the KHOU 11 Investigates team did some surveillance work today. Here's Jeremy Rogowski. We had eyes on three staging areas. Our photojournalist was up in Tomball. I was across from the KDISD football stadiums, and we spoke with an out-of-state line worker who was stationed in Galveston. It's eight in the morning at this KD staging site, and we pick three random trucks to keep an eye on. This green tree trimming truck and these two white bucket trucks. Down in Galveston, we checked in with our linemen who asked not to be identified. How long have you been on the clock? 6 a.m. It was almost 9 a.m. when we talked. Now we're sitting in a parking lot. Sitting and waiting? Correct. Waiting for his work orders. An hour and a half later, he texted, still nothing. And an hour after that, we got work now. Meanwhile, up in Tomball, we tracked how many trucks left this staging site over three hours. 21 the first hour, 30 the next hour, and 22 the third. 67. The parking lot still had plenty of trucks when we left. And back in Katy, just past 11, and our two trucks are still here. Those white trucks didn't take off until 11.33. And as for that green tree trimming rig, our tree trimming truck's still there, and it is just after noon. It would be another 26 minutes before it took off. And by the time it made it to the job site, the first tree branch was cut at 1.18 in the afternoon. Darren Carroll is Centerpoint Senior Vice President of Operations. Viewers are saying, I see all these trucks, but wonder why are they in this parking lot and not out in the field? It's a fair question. Totally empathize with customers thinking that and wondering that. Um, what I will tell you is that safety is at the forefront of everything that we do. Carroll said external crews must undergo safety briefings and other logistical preparations, and that takes time. Should it take four or five hours to get these guys moving and doing the work they were hired to do? It's not something that happens in, in every case. And, you know, we don't know the exact circumstances of, of why that may have happened, right? So I don't, I don't want to speak to that as though it's the norm. Centerpoint's vice president adds that all outside crews are now in place and getting workers on the road should go quicker from here on out. Back to you. All right, guys, you've seen it for yourself. Those that don't live in Houston or the or around uh, sur from, ah, surrounding areas that don't have power. They got staging areas all over the place. They're blaming the uh, arborists, the people that cut the trees down. That, was that green truck you've seen, they're blaming them, saying they got to get started first. And then they're saying, oh, when they move the trees, we got to uh, do damage assessment then. And they're, the, you know, then they're saying, you know, the, the power trucks are, are not moving. You've seen the whole situation. That was a good video they did. Did you see the guy? Tell him right on him. He ain't going to be identified. Look at the time they sitting there. I've done industrial type work. They sitting around waiting for work orders. So they just sitting there, just stand by. If you got this big grid where you can see where what areas need the most attention, you should not have a bunch of trucks just sitting out there on standby when they can be doing something. Another thing that tells me is this, guys, and I want you to pay attention. A lot of guys that have done, you know, that type of work or any type of service provision work, they know when you come to a new scene to help and do stuff with the infrastructure you're not familiar with, you can do the work, but you've got to be told what area to go and do the work at. They don't know the area. So what they're doing is they're trying to incorporate it to where they're getting these newer companies that are coming in to do some work themselves. But they have people they got to report to out of state before they even start doing the work. You see what I'm saying? So it's like a big chain of command where it's like a bunch of chiefs and not enough Indians. So a lot of people are just sitting around standing. You know, I've done work like this, not power line work, but I went to other states. I had a job where I went to other states and went to go help other people that was in a crisis or in a time of need. And a lot of times we would stand around all day and not even do anything. Then after a while, the job would be fixed and they'll send us back. Or well, when they do send us back out to go help somebody, you know, we would be on standby and they would redirect us from someplace and somewhere else, depending on how much heat they was feeling, you know, as far as, uh, you know, scrutiny with what they was going. Man, it's just a mess. This is a mess. You got all of these people sitting around doing nothing. And I think they don't even know what part to start first. And it's a lot of people saying, giving commands and nobody, uh, you know, the rest of the workers are just sitting there. 
It's a damn shame. But that's the first video I wanted to show you, right? And like now you see, like what we was talking about, people at every minute is vital. People are sitting in their house roasting like rotisserie chickens, whether they're young or old. People got newborn babies. This is unreal. Take a look at this video right here. This talks about the situation with uh, how like everybody act like they don't have a clue. Just pay attention to it and you'll see through the BS and leave a comment and tell me what you think about it. Look. After Beryl, somebody decided the best way to get a message to Center Point was to paint it on the side of the highway in graffiti, and it's catching a lot of attention this morning. Yeah, and as of right now, more than 1.1 million customers still waiting for their power to be restored. KPRC2's Rochelle Turner is live near I-10 in Sawyer to show us the message. Rochelle. Sophia Owen, good morning to you. Take a look. The sign says Center Pointless. And a lot of people are expressing their frustration about the power company's response after Hurricane Barrel. Some people feel like the power company wasn't prepared and waited too late to send help. Now, we know that a lot of you are frustrated waking up another day without the power, but that sign, it has nothing to do with those workers who are putting in several hours to get the power back on. Now, Centerpoint released a new map yesterday that shows the restoration process. Based on the progress, the company expects to have the power restored to 400,000 customers by tomorrow, 350,000 by the end of Sunday, and that means 350,000 additional customers will still be without power until next week. However, the power company plans to release specific restoration times sometime today. About 12,000 additional frontline workers from across the country are here working 16 plus hour shifts to restore the power. We spoke one on one with Jason Ryan, who is the executive vice president of Centerpoint and asked him about the outage tracker and why it's not working during this difficult and challenging time. We are starting completely from scratch with a new outage map uh, that we unfortunately uh, were aiming for the end of this month in advance of the typical hurricane, uh, peak of hurricane season, right, August, September. Um, but we are bringing a completely new uh, outage tracker map that will be able to withstand the significant traffic that we saw during the derecho. Uh, it was that significant traffic on the map that brought that site down. We knew if we put that same site back up, it would not meet customer expectations this go around either. And we know that during the 6 a.m. hour, you guys were able to speak with Centerpoint. We're going to have much more on their interview coming up on KPRC 2 Plus live stream at 7 o'clock. But again, Centerpoint workers are working around the clock and they're going to have a better restoration time on when power will be restored to about 1.1 million customers sometime today. Reporting live in Sawyer Heights, I'm Rochelle Turner, KPRC 2 News. All right, now you've seen that. That, that story broke this morning. Somebody wrote Center Pointless under the thing, and I give them respect. Shout yourself out, whoever did it. Now I ain't going to say it because you're doing graffiti. But anyway, it makes sense. There are a bunch of people sitting around with their thumbs up their asses while people are cooking in this goddamn Texas heat. Now, did y'all pay attention? Did you pay attention? They had the center point guy up there. Remember they had that bullshit map I showed y'all? And I said, that map is not the correct map. Oh, we just updated it yesterday. It was the same damn grid from something that happened months ago out here. I called that shit right out. What'd he say today? Because people are talking about it. What'd he say today? We're working on a whole new system to where it'd be accurate. You should have did that shit before the storm even fucking came. Because if somebody was out there watching or whoever your uh, internet people are, your IT people, they could have seen that that shit was stuck. Hey, wait a minute. This is the wrong thing. That's like having a screen with something paused on it from something a long time ago. And you trained to read screens. You already know a long time ago. Hey, that needs to be fixed. Y'all don't know y'all system is outdated. Now, all of a sudden today, at the, uh, a bunch of people died and are dying as of the day. I mean, people, there are going to be casualties from this. And that's the part that's hurtful. It's going to be casualties. And it's getting hotter by the day. Listen, I was drinking water yesterday. It was coming right out of me. 
there are a lot of people out here besides, you know, them needing medication and things like that. They can't even get it because the uh, drug stores and stuff. Man, this whole thing is a mess. We, we, we know what what things go into other things and all this. So and so. But listen, for you to sit up there and I told you they was being disingenuous. Nobody wants to look bad in this thing. Everybody dropped the ball. The map looking stupid. Now, all of a sudden, you're going to start. So overnight, you can just do a whole new system. You've got like 500 IT people just making a new app and all this stuff. And it's going to change overnight. What did they say? We're going to get 100 something thousand people done. Hundreds of thousand people today. Hundreds of thousand people tomorrow. And then the rest of the people next week. Listen, they've been saying for the longest time, the hurricane came Tuesday, right? They've been saying the same thing for the longest time. Oh, power be on tomorrow, power be on tomorrow, power be on tomorrow. What was y'all doing these other few days? Because there were trucks here. I drove by the racetrack over there uh, on the Beltway, that old dog track, and it was filled with, I'm like, why are these, all these uh, energy trucks over here? Somebody lying. And now the lies is coming out and they looking stupid. I mean, damn, man. Come on, Houston need to do better than that, man. It's good people there and you couldn't even be honest with them. I'm Stock Market Steve for the Dynamic Reason channel. As always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.